Hello and welcome to part one of a series of videos where I talk about how I created the 10 gallon drip wall terrarium that's featured in one of my other videos. If you haven't checked that out and would like to, I have a link in the description of this video as well as an info card linked up for you to click. First thing you need is a tank and in this case I got a 10 gallon aquarium from a local pet store. I was building this drip wall tank for my friend and we wanted to keep the budget uh, pretty low so we didn't want to buy a really nice expensive tank so we went ahead and got this 10 gallon tetra. This photo is just to show you the layout of how the tank is going to be uh, standing vertically and how there's going to be a front panel of glass right here that's going to contain the water in the bottom of the drip tank. Here's the panel of glass that I got. I got this at Lowe's, which is a local home improvement store, and they have some 3 seconds inch thick glass that's pretty cheap. So I got them to cut me a piece um, that would fit inside of the tank, just inside of the tank right here. I did my measurements and kind of estimated the height that I wanted and then made sure that I got the correct measurements that uh, would be exactly in between this panel of glass and this panel of glass on the sides so that when I insert that panel uh, behind this black frame it would be as close as possible to the side panels of glass of the tank. This photo shows about the thickness of the glass. You can see it's pretty thin and here's the silicone that I used to adhere the glass panel into the tank. I like to use this Loctite clear silicone because it's just 100% silicone and it doesn't have any additives of any kind. I avoid all those types of silicone that have mold inhibitors and other chemicals in them because they're potentially harmful to plants and animals. I used to hang out a lot on dendroboard.com which is a forum uh, for people that make vivariums and keep poison dart frogs and I knew some people on there that had experience with using silicone that had additives in it like mold inhibitors and they had some of them had some problems with the development of the tadpoles and frogs and additionally there was a guy on there that was a, an expert at uh, like biology or zoology or something like that and he also worked at creating display tanks in zoos and he was saying not to use those additive type of silicone so I just avoid that altogether and it just makes sense to me anyway to just use 100% silicone that's aquarium safe such as this right here. I don't have photos from the glass installation, but I can just describe that. Basically, there were two steps. The first step was I put the tank face down with the opening towards a table like this, and I raised it up on some cardboard boxes, and then I could reach my arm up underneath here, and I put silicone uh, along the inside of the tank rim in here, and then I reached up and took my glass panel, and I sat that on top of the inside of the... Uh, tank rim here and on top of the silicone and then I put some weight on it to force that glass down against this rim and to uh, you know apply pressure and get the silicone squeezed in there and make sure it's all in there good and then I left it for a couple days and let that cure then the next step was to remove the weight here and then I just went in there and put a bunch of silicone uh, in these three corners you know the corner along here this side and on this side and I made sure that the silicone was completely 100% solid all the way from this glass to this glass of the tank and from the you know from the glass of the panel to the inside of the tank there made sure that it's always contacting and there's no gaps or openings or anything and I smoothed that in there with my finger all along those corners I then let that cure for a couple days and then I was able to uh, stand the tank up and as you can see this is what I uh, came out with the tank here and then you've got the glass panel and I just put some tape on here so that you could see the edge and also it was actually sharp and I hadn't sanded it down yet. At this point I filled water up to the top of the glass and then I let it sit for two days to make sure there were no leaks. Now here's the tank with a light hood on it. This isn't the hood that I ended up using, but it was just so that I could uh, visualize it and um, you know see how the tank looked with the light and just kind of get excited about the next steps. The next step is to create a structure and a framework to build upon for the hardscape. So essentially I need to create an underlying foundation uh, that I can then put foam on top of and wood on top of and other elements. And since this is a tall tank, and there's going to be heavy pieces of wood in it. I need to make sure that I 
uh, create a solid structure and that it's uh, attached to the inside of the tank really well so that when I put the other elements in, everything is going to stay put permanently. So I'm using this lighting grid and you can cut it with these type of cutters. I have these, they're wire cutters, but they're an angle cutter. And so the blades are kind of off to the side and it makes it easier to cut uh, into the grid. This is a photo of kind of doing an initial prototype of how I would lay out the inside of the grid work here. And here's a top view. As you can see, I have, you know, both sides and the back covered. And then I put an angle piece that sort of inlays in there and it inserts in between the grid pieces. And by having a brace at an angle, that's going to make it extremely strong. Um, once I once I take the silicone and I attach the grid work and everything in against the glass, this angle piece is going to add an incredible amount of strength and it's going to make it so that these walls right here do not pull off at any point. You'll notice here that I have a hole drilled on the top of the tank. Uh, this is for the water to return into the tank that's going to be coming uh, around here and dripping all through and I'll show you how the plumbing and stuff is set up later. I just wanted to point out that I've got that return hole up here. Now you could do it on the back of the tank coming through, but I did not want to do that because I didn't want to risk water uh, back seeping out and going back down the outside of the tank. I thought it'd be safer to just put it at the top, make sure that uh, all the water is going down and it stays inside of the tank. I'll just briefly talk about the plumbing setup and then we'll go into more detail later on. Basically, I was going to do an internal pump setup. Uh, at the beginning and we were going to keep the budget low and keep it really simple but what I found is the tank was too small and the landscape and things that I wanted to do were too complicated that I could not get a pump to fit in there um, that had the amount of strength needed to pump up this height and through all of the different uh, drip systems so I decided to go ahead and do an external sump with a pump and outer plumbing and all kinds of stuff and make it a little bit more complicated uh, and so that required me to drill a hole for a bulkhead. This is a bulkhead. Essentially, it is a piece of plumbing. It has a rubber gasket right here and a nut right here. And essentially, you drill a hole in the glass. You slide uh, this threaded piece through the hole. Then on the outside of the tank, you put this uh, washer or this nut and you tighten it. And that way, it sandwiches... Um, the glass in between and this rubber seal seals it off and then the water comes from the inside of the tank through the strainer and then back out uh, into whatever plumbing setup or drainage or whatever you have. This is a half inch bulkhead and I use half inch PVC pipe. In the future I would use a larger diameter bulkhead and pipe, probably something like a one inch. What happened is I had the water coming in from the pump and then it was draining out through the bulkhead as an overflow setup and the bulkhead and the piping were too narrow in diameter to allow the flow of water as fast as I wanted and therefore I had to restrict the flow of the water coming into the tank to avoid the water level rising and overflowing out of the tank. So if you're working on a build that has flowing water I'm going to recommend that you use at least a one inch bulkhead or larger. That way you can ensure that the water flow will not be restricted by the diameter of the pipe so that you can get as much water coming in as you want and you can get it draining as fast as you want. The smaller bulkheads like this half inch one that I used are probably best suited to a setup where you might have water gathering at the bottom of a vivarium and then you need to drain that water on occasion so it's more of a static setup where it's just kind of a drain system as opposed to an actual flowing water system and this is the hole that I drilled after drilling this I rinsed out all of the glass uh, particles and rinsed it all out and I dried the tank and then after the tank was dry I took the uh, plastic lighting grid the egg crate that I showed you earlier and I siliconed that to the inside of the tank I put it on the left side, uh, right side, and back, just as I'd shown you in an earlier photo. Before I actually applied the silicone and sealed the grid into the tank, I made sure and cut a notch of several squares of the grid out in the bottom right corner where the bulkhead would be to ensure that when I put the bulkhead through the hole, it's gonna be able to go through and not be blocked by the grid. Then I took a whole bunch of silicone and I took a kind of piece of plastic. It was like a plastic palette knife and I smeared it all along the inside of the walls and I 
pressed the grid in against the silicone and then I put some uh, weight on it and some braces and things against all the sides to force it against the glass and then I left that for uh, several days to make sure it was completely cured and I'm sorry I don't have any photos of that process. Now that the foundation was inside of the tank I was able to start prototyping the plumbing and the drip system. For the drip system I decided to go with some half inch PEX fittings because they're lightweight and they're compact and they're easy to uh, attach just they just have barbed fittings and you can just like slide over some uh, vinyl hose and you're good to go so I went with that and I got some elbows I got some T pieces I got some end plugs and a bunch of different parts uh, so that I could kind of work with the drip system plumbing and get creative and do whatever I needed to do and here's the vinyl hose that I got. It's just, uh, I got it on Amazon. It's a half inch vinyl hose. And here is the initial uh, prototype for the drip system. As you can see, the uh, water return comes up through here, goes down into that hole that we had drilled for the water return. Then I have a T fitting here and I've got the hose splitting off this side and coming over and it got an end plug and then splitting off this side wrapping all the way around and then I'd have an end plug there. Here's a uh, close up of the return. It comes up from the pump in the back, just comes around over here and then goes back down in and there's just a close up and as you can see here there's the silicone uh, against the glass and you can see there I put quite a bit. And this right here is a rubber stopper that I cut in half and I jam that in there so that it holds the water return hose and everything in place and kind of blocks some of that hole so that it's sealed a little better. The reason why the hole is so large is because as mentioned earlier I originally was going to have the pump inside of the tank so we needed to have the hole a lot bigger than the plumbing size to make sure that we could fit the power plug for the pump through that hole. And here's an inside view of the tank where the water return comes down and that's got the T that splits off. Another, but a little bit wider view. And here's a uh, wider view of the entire tank with the framework in there. And this was some stuff I was messing with, some ideas, but I ended up not using it. And also, you'll notice that I have a piece of uh, plastic right here that I taped on the front of the tank. And that's to protect the uh, glass panel that I siliconed in there because it's so thin. I wanted to protect it from you know bumping it so I wouldn't shatter it. Here's the lighting hood and you can see that it blocks all this stuff from view and you can't see that. So now that I have the framework and some of the inner workings of the plumbing kind of uh, prototyped out, then I decided to start messing around with the hardscape elements so that I could get an overall hardscape layout that I would like and then that would help me determine the finer details of the drip system layout.